Welcome, my name is Michael Anderson. Today we'll be talking about food rations and other types of food that the Mormon Battalion had available during their 2,000 mile march to California. Issues and problems pertaining to receiving of those rations uh, began almost immediately. Uh, once they gathered at uh, Sarpy's trading post uh, on the 21st of July, they left. Uh, one day out, they had to stall for a while, waiting for a supply wagon to show up with their rations. Uh, when those rations arrived, uh, they were in the form of flour. Now, one of the problems they had is when they left Council Bluffs and, and Sarpy's trading post, they had no tentage and they had very little mess gear to work with. So when they received their first ration of flour, they weren't quite sure what to do with it without any mess gear. Uh, a private, Zadok Judd, uh, who belonged to Company E, uh, he recorded uh, what, uh, what happened on that occasion. Now, as we had no cooking utensils, a lump of dough was mixed by pouring water in the sack which had been opened, and the flour hollowed out to hold water. Now, when the dough was properly mixed, each man would get a stick similar to a common walking cane, go to the sack and get a lump of dough, pull it out in a long string and wrap it around and around the stick and then hold it to the fire until it was considered baked, then eat it. So what they were doing is they were taking a, a lump of, of the dough and they would slowly roll that out into a long rope and then carefully wrap it around a stick and then hold that stick over the fire, turning the stick so that the, the dough would actually bake. Uh, it actually doesn't taste too bad if you, don't, if you don't burn it. Once the Mormon Battalion arrived at Fort Leavenworth, uh, they gathered the rest of the materials that they needed, particularly in preparing food. Uh, one thing that happened was they formed into mess groups. And once again, Private Zadok Judd uh, explained this in his journal. We were organized into messes of six men to cook, eat, and sleep in one tent. We drew our rations for the mess of six in one bolt. Now what the, the men were doing is, is th they would work together as a team of six. Uh, each tent that they were issued would hold six men. So they slept together in a tent, they would gather their rations as a mess group, and they would prepare those rations to gather. Now, as they traveled along the trail, they generally were keeping their mess equipment inside the wagons that were following the battalion. But at one point of the trail, uh, those wagons, uh, for one reason or, or another, became useless. The, the, the oxen died, uh, the wagons broke down, and at one point, the men were required to carry uh, all their gear, including the mess gear. Now, what each mess group would do is they'd each take uh, one of the items uh, so that one man wasn't carrying all the gear that they needed. An example of some of those items needed in preparing food is one man would carry some sort of a cooking pot made out of tin so it was lightweight. You can see the size of this one's about a gallon size and this would prepare enough food for about six men. So one of the men in the, in the uh, mess group would either uh, tie this on top of his knapsack or tie it on the underside of the knapsack. Another man might carry the frying pan. Uh, this too is, a, is an iron handle, but it's a sheet tin is what the, the pan was made out of. And once again, you can see this is about the size that a group of six men could prepare their food in. So one of the men would carry uh, the frying pan. The other men might carry such things as a hand axe uh, to prepare kindling and, and firewood. Uh, or even to cut tent stakes or whatever else they might need. Once again, not one man carried everything, but they would uh, carry different items. Some of the men may carry such things as, as a knife. This, this particular knife is for skinning. So if they say they shot a deer, an antelope, or a buffalo, this knife would be used in, in skinning the animal, and maybe one of the men would also carry a butcher knife. Uh, for, for cutting the animal up and preparing the meat for cooking. Another man might carry uh, some kind of kit that carried all the necessary items for starting a fire. You got your, your iron uh, striker with your flint 
and different materials to, to be used in starting a fire. So each man in the, the mess group would carry different items needed in the preparation of food. Now, when the wagons broke down, uh, the, the men were using what they call uh, military issue nesting pots. And this is the smallest of the three or four in the series of nesting pots. And you can see that this is quite large, so it's very unlikely that the men were, were using the military issue mess pots. They were required to pick something up uh, from the sutlers or traders that they could use in preparing the food. Now let's take some time to talk about rations. Now the military had an established uh, setup for rations. Each man was allotted so much in the different food groups. Now the men were not actually each individually issued food. Uh, each company had a commissary sergeant and that sergeant uh, would take his commissary corporal and maybe a couple other men and they would go to wherever the battalion uh, commissary sergeant was issuing out the food and they would gather the rations for the entire company and then they would return to the company and break those up into uh, the, the mess group. So each mess group would get enough for their, their six men. So as I talk about these different rations, when I refer to amounts, keep in mind that those amounts were uh, per single man, but in most cases you can times that by six and that's what each mess group would get to prepare their food. The first uh, food group to talk about uh, would be uh, meat. Now here I have an example of some fresh beef. Uh, meat was, was given in two forms. It was either salted, salted pork or salted beef, or it was, when they were on a long trail like the Mormon Battalion was, they took uh, cattle with them. And so they had fresh beef available. And generally they were issued 16 to 20 ounces per man uh, per day. Once again, the, uh, each mess group would gather their, their, their rations for six men and they would, they would spread, uh, spread the duties of cooking and preparing the meat throughout the day. Uh, so for the most part, the bat battalion was eating uh, fresh beef. Uh, there were some men in the battalion that were issued rifles for the purpose of, of hunting, and they sometimes would, would procure meat, whether it was buffalo, uh, deer, antelope, uh, and that would supplement uh, their, their, their meat rations. Uh, the next ration to talk about is their bread or flour rations. So their bread or flour rations, they either got uh, about a pound, 16 ounces, 18 ounces a day of flour, or hardtack. This is an example of hardtack. Hardtack is simply flour mixed with water, a little bit of salt is added to it. And it's rolled out into a thickness of about a half inch, holes were poked into it, and then it was baked on both sides for a, a long period of time to get all the moisture out. The idea was to get the moisture out so that this item could be uh, stored in uh, uh, boxes or, or crates and then issued to the soldiers and as long as moisture and insects did not get to this it would last a long period of time. However, the battalion for the most part were getting uh, flour and we, we talked uh, briefly about their, their first issue of flour uh, ration and how they prepared it and there were a number of different ways that they took the flour and uh, made them into flapjacks or uh, there are a number of different things that they did in uh, using their flour to to prepare it to eat. The next item on the list was coffee. Each man was uh, issued coffee usually in the form of a bean, about an ounce per man. Uh, that was per day, so a mess of six men would get about six ounces of bean. Uh, they would be required to, to crush this. Uh, there's reports that there were a few of the men that actually had coffee grinders uh, available. They were probably carried in the, in the wagons for them to, to grind their coffee. Without a coffee grinder, they'd have to get a, a plate and get something, a rock or something hard and, and crush the beans up. They could even put them in a, a ration bag and pound them with a rock and crush them up into beans so that they could boil them. Uh, another item that they, they may have carried as a, as a mess group would have been a, a coffee pot that I, I failed to show you. I don't have an example with me today. The next uh, item was they were given one third cup of either dried beans, dried split peas, 
or dried rice. They did not get all three a day. They were only issued one of the three each day. Once again, he times that by six, and they could make for a pretty good pot of either beans, split peas, or rice. They could actually add the, uh, the, the meat to that and, and make a pretty good meal out of it. The rest of the rations that were allotted uh, consisted of sugar. There was almost two ounces per man of sugar given each day. Sugar back then was kind of a lot more granulated, kind of brown in color compared to sugar today. So they were given about two ounces of that a day. They were given just under an ounce of salt per day per man, but once again, it, it wasn't given per man, it was given per mess group. They were also given uh, so many ounces of soap per company, and, and the company would have to break that up and the soap, the lye soap, would be shared by the men. Uh, another item that was included were candles. People think, well, why would candles be included? These candles weren't really for the purpose of each man to use to read at nighttime uh, in the dark. Uh, these were primarily used for sentinels, for guard mounts, for uh, men doing performing duties within the company. So the, the, that was provided to, to guard mount uh, and other duties that were required of the men to do. Unfortunately, they didn't have all these things available all the time. By the end of the trail, uh, they were running low on beef, they were running low on uh, flour, and as they got within about two uh, weeks of California, they were starting to cut some of these rations in half. So they didn't always have all these rations. This is what was uh, allowed per day uh, by the military, uh, if it was at all possible. Now, of course, the men, when they got into uh, certain towns like Santa Fe and other places where there were settlements, uh, they, would, uh, they were probably not, uh, uh, they, they, they were probably starving to a degree at times, and at least starving for certain things that were not part of the military rations. And so they often traded or bartered with uh, uh, Indians or, uh, or, or other uh, people who might have something for sale. Maybe some women might have had some fresh baked goods, or there might have been some uh, fruits available that were not part of the rations, and so uh, the battalion uh, men uh, often got other things that they might need. Along with rations, water needs were even more important. Besides for drinking purposes, water was needed for cooking and for washing. There were stretches of their march where water holes were few and far between. Of course, the canteens were the primary means of transporting that water from what one water hole to another. During one of those dry stretches, in fact, it was about two days, on uh, approximately September 19th, uh, Sergeant Daniel Tyler uh, reported uh, or wrote about what was going on during that time period. He stated, what an aggravation to a person almost dying for want of water. We passed one lone pond full of insects of all sizes and shapes. Out of this pond, we drove several uh, buffalo from it. Even when the water was not roiled, it was discolored, had a most disgusting appearance. The animals doubtless rendered it more newsome than it otherwise would have been by gathering in it to defend themselves from flies. Our re readers will perhaps imagine that we were now more disappointed than before. On the contrary, kind friends, no luxury was ever more thankfully received. The few whose canteens and flagons were not exhausted, of course, did not use it. But bad as it was, it was very welcome to the most of us. An another member of the battalion, uh, Private Henry Bigler, also reported the events of that day. Uh, he dated as se September 17th. Today we broke camp and marched about 23 miles and camped without f uh, wood and water. We saw hundreds of wild animals, buffalo, antelope, and wolves. Two buffalo come running near our line when 30 or more muskets were fired at them, breaking the leg of one. Today men suffered for water and also the next day. Many gave out and had to be hauled to camp in wagons. We passed a small pond of water filled with the droppings of buffalo and all other wild animals. This we did not seem to mind. The weather for the season was warm but we drank freely this, this filthy water and felt refreshed. But, oh gracious, how sick it made us. For additional information on rations, 
a uh, member of the Mormon Battalion Association, uh, Kevin Hansen, has written a wonderful article which documents not only uh, rations that were eaten and prepared by the members of the battalion, but also other food items that they were able to procure along the trail. You can see the Mormon Battalion Association website and look for Kevin Hansen's article on rations. Also to get further information, and most of the information presented today can be found in my book, the book uh, written by Michael Anderson entitled The Mormon Battalion, Mexican War Volunteers. And that can be found on the Mormon Battalion Association website. And all proceeds from that book go to the Mormon Battalion Association. Thank you. I'm lonesome since I cross the hill and o'er the moor and valley. Such heavy thoughts my heart do fill since parting with my Sally. I seek no more the fine and gay, for each but does remind me how swift the hours did pass away with the girl I left behind.